been asked a couple times about this question, which uh, describes a ninja standing a distance of five meters from the center of a platform that starts at rest and has an angular acceleration of half a radian per second squared. If we have a static friction between the ninja and the ground of, or the platform, of 0.6, how long until the ninja is thrown off the platform uh, with this value of g? Now, this is kind of an interesting problem because uh, we have to have a static friction force providing an acceleration. And that acceleration has two components. It's the total acceleration is the quadratic sum of the centripetal acceleration squared plus a tangential acceleration. We haven't dealt with a lot of problems with tangential accelerations, but if we think about this ninja here, there's going to be a acceleration a sub c, there's going to be a tangential, that's supposed to be a 90 degree angle, of a sub t. And then the total acceleration is just the resultant of these two components. So that's a total. Anyways, we know from rotational motion that we can rewrite this as a centripetal acceleration. That's omega squared times r, where r is the distance from the center all of that squared, and then the tangential acceleration is equal to the angular acceleration times the radius, distance from the center, all of that uh, squared. And we know that this acceleration has to be provided by the static friction force divided by the mass of the ninja. So if I know the mass of the ninja, I can go ahead and figure out how uh, or I know the mass of the ninja, I can figure out how fast this uh, ninja can be spun without being flown off. We know that the static friction force is at maximum mu s times the mass of the ninja divided by the gravitational coefficient, or gravitational acceleration, divided by the mass of the ninja, so that we know that this acceleration it has to be less than mu s times g. And the condition when it's thrown off the platform is just when it is equal. So that's why I've been using this equality sign. Therefore, what I'm going to do for the rest of this problem is figure out what these components of the angular acceleration and uh, are uh, to determine the total acceleration. The centripetal acceleration is omega squared times r. And I know that omega at any given time is equal to omega initial plus the angular acceleration times time. And from the problem, we know that that angular, ex, uh, angular speed is initially 0. So we know that that's just equal to alpha times t. Therefore, what I can do is I can write down my total acceleration as, oops, I've made a mistake. This is to the 1 half power. Uh, the, angular, the total acceleration. Uh, is going to be the square root of omega squared r, plugging into this value of omega and squaring it, I get that that's alpha squared t squared uh, times r all squared plus alpha squared r squared squared r squared to the 1 half power. And then that's equal to uh, putting in the, applying this power to everything in the bracket. We get that's alpha to the fourth t to the fourth r squared plus alpha squared r squared to the 1 half. And at this point, I need to solve this equation, uh, which is equal to mu s g, for the uh, time, which is buried in here and raised to the fourth power. So let's go ahead and work on that on the next page. OK, so to solve this equation, what we need to do is just square both sides of it. So I'm going to start out by doing that. So I'm going to say that, that mu s squared g squared is equal to alpha to the fourth t to the fourth r squared minus mu, uh, uh, sorry, alpha squared r squared plus, definitely a plus. From there, I'm going to go ahead and subtract the alpha squared r squared on one side and then divide through by alpha to the fourth r squared. So I'm going to get that t to the fourth is equal to uh, mu s squared g squared minus alpha squared r squared all over 
alpha to the fourth t oh, alpha to the fourth r squared. Then I'll just divide that alpha to the fourth r squared under both terms. So we get that this is mu s squared g squared over alpha to the fourth r squared minus 1 over alpha squared. And then I take the fourth root to actually get my expression for time. So t is equal to the fourth root of, let's come back and finish that later, mu s squared g squared over alpha to the fourth r squared minus 1 over alpha squared. Finish my radical. OK, from here, let's plug in some expressions. So t raised to the uh, static friction coefficient is 0 0.6 squared. g, in this case, is 10 meters per second squared. Divide that all through by alpha, which is 0 0.5 radians per second squared, all raised to the fourth power. Divide by distance from the center, 5 meters squared. From there, we subtract from that 1 over alpha squared, which is the 0 0.5 radians per second squared. Uh, quantity squared, close bracket to the 1 fourth power. Execute that in your calculator, and you get 2.65 seconds. And we're done.